Hey guys, welcome to Slasher X Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a count up timer. So if you've got one of those zombie horror survival games, you can track how long the player has stayed alive for. It's pretty useful. For this tutorial, I'm going to have a button that starts and stops the, the count up. In your case, you could just use, you know, as soon as the game starts, then it, it starts it, and when the game ends, it stops and then saves it somewhere. So in here, I'm going to have a button, and its current phase is going to be stopped. So I wanted to have the play phase first, so when I click that, then it'll change uh, to the pause right because it's playing in there. If I click it, it'll pause. So let's add the second one there, and let's scale it down about I don't know, fifteen percent. Yeah, it's pretty small. Okay, I'm going to call this sprite change phase. Okay. Center that. All right, so now we've got that. Now, in my case, I'm going to use two objects. One of them is going to be the button, so it's going to be uh, object button change phase. Quite a mouthful. Oh, no capital needed. And we're going to give it sprite phase. And the other one is going to be called object count up controller. I'm going to be using uh, global variables. It's also good. I suggest you use it too. And then uh, kind of controller will have the global seconds, minutes, hours, etc. And it'll set those all as global so that you can use them anywhere in your program. All right, so we also need to make a little room. Let's go here, room one. Uh, let's just call it room one like that. All right, so first we're going to go to our object button change phase. And on create, I don't want it to flicker between the between the two, you know, these two. I don't want it to go flicker, 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 flicker when I start, so I'm going to have it start on zero. Okay, so here we go. Image speed equals naught. Uh, not plus. There we go. So it won't flicker as we start. Image index equals naught. So it's going to not flicker, and it's going to be on the first element in that sprite array. So that's this one, image naught. Okay, then we're going to add a mouse left pressed. So when I click this button, it's now going to do some stuff. So we say if image index equals equals naught. So if it's currently on, it's displaying the place right. So it means that the numbers aren't moving. Then we wanted to change image index to one. Okay, so it'll change it to the other sprite image. Then we want global dot count up equal to let's see if it's on naught and we push play it's going to equal true so it's going to start counting up because we've clicked it okay so then here we say else so if image index is one if it's displaying the pause right it means it's already counting so we wanted to change image index to zero so it's going to change to this one to say, oh, if you wanted to start again, click me. And here it's going to say global dot count up. And we're going to set that to false. Okay. So if it's got if it's displaying the play sprite, and we click it, it's going to change it to display the pause sprite, and then it's going to set global count up equals true, so it can start counting up because it's active. If it's displaying uh, one which is the other one. It means it's already active. We're going to set it to inactive and switch off that boolean variable count up. We can set it to false. Okay, so that's pretty much done. Um, then we're going to go to our count up controller. Now this is where it gets really interesting. We're going to have a create event and we're going to need quite a few different variables here. Let's see, we're going to need uh, global.seconds, we're going to need global.minutes, and we need global.hours. I'm going to set them all to naught because in the beginning of the game, it's everything is naught. And then we're going to say global dot count up equals false. Okay, so it's not counting up when the game starts, or well, in my case, because I've got the button. But you can set global count up to true if this counter starts immediately. All right, I think that's all we need right now. Yes, yes. Okay, then in our step event, there's going to be quite a, quite a bit of math here. We're going to say if 
global count up equals true. Okay, so if we're allowed to start the count up, then global dot seconds, there we go, plus equals one divided by 30. Okay, now you're probably asking why do I say one over 30 and not just one? Now, if you go to room, you can see my room speed here is 30. Now, if I just set that to one, I mean, it'll work, and then I can just say count up, you know, plus equals one. But in your case, you'll have your game running and you've got your actual room speed. So you might have that as 30 or 60, you see, and that means it's going to be executing that script 60 or 30 times a second. So if you've got 60, then in the controller here, you just say 1 out of over 60 instead of 30. 30, that's the room speed. So you can just say 1 over room speed if you want. So it'll plus equal 1 point, and then it will divide it by 30, and then once it's done the script 30 times, it'll be one second or whatever, and, and then it'll increment by one. So we're just going to use room speed, and then it doesn't really matter actually what you've got in your settings. Very nice. Okay. So far, so good. So every time, every room speed things, it'll be one second, and then it'll increase seconds by one. Now we're going to say... What happens if seconds gets to 60? We're going to increment minutes by 1. We're going to minus 60 from seconds. So to do that, we're going to say if global.seconds is less than 60, right? And global.minutes, oh, whoops, not minutes. Global.seconds is greater than 59.9. All right, now I'll explain that in a second. So if it's less than 60, because we don't want it to ever get to 60, we don't want it to display 60, we want it to get to 50 something, and then as soon as it, it sees itself as being less than 60, but somewhere in 59.99999, whatever, because remember we're dividing by room speed, so it's not going to be a whole number all the time, it's going to be a lot of reoccurring digits all the way down there. So when it's in between 59.9 uh, and 60, then it's going to say global dot seconds equals naught, so it's going to take seconds equal naught, and then we're going to take global dot minutes, uh, and we're going to increment it by one, all right? So when seconds gets to the place where it's going to clock over, it equals naught, and then minutes goes up by one. Okay, but now you're thinking, well, what happens when minutes gets to 60? We're going to have to increase hours by one, so it's pretty much the same principle here. We just say, if global dot minutes equal 60. We can just say global dot minutes equals naught and global dot hours plus equals one. See that? So as soon as global minutes equals 60, it's going to change them to naught and then it's going to make global hours plus one. But you won't really see that 60 because this is all in one step. All right, so that's pretty much it. So with this running, it'll always be, you know, incrementing seconds by one every room speed per second things. And then when it gets to 60, it's going to take to naught plus minutes by one. And if the minutes, if all that plusing of ones gets to 60, it's going to set it to naught again and increase hours by one. Okay, so now that we've got um, the background going, so that's going to be doing that. We need some way to display it. So in that, we're going to have a draw. We're going to have a draw event right here. Okay, and we're going to give it some code. Now, if you notice, uh, you know, normal clock types, they're in, in the frame of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 kind of thing. So we've got your, like, hours right here, then we've got your minutes and your seconds. Now, what we wanted to do is we wanted to display a 0 when our hours are less than 10, right? So we want to put a 0, and then we want to put 9 or 5 or whatever it is we want to do that. And specifically with the minutes and the seconds, we want to do that. Hours doesn't really matter uh, because hours are in hundreds, not sixties. Okay, so let's do this. So we're going to say, let's first set our font. Draw set font. I haven't actually set a font. We better do that. Font. Let's make this font one. Arial is fine. Let's make it about 18 so we can see what's going on. Okay, draw set font font one, 
case we've got our font and our color which will set color um, this is kind of a greeny lime so I'm gonna go for sea lime that should fit nicely all right here here we go so if global dot seconds is less than 10 okay and global dot minutes is less than 10 so if they're both less than 10 because you want to put that zero there remember here we see draw text and where about we're going to put it uh, let's have a look here we have a button right over there so we can draw draw it about 128 112 remember that 128 112 28 and 12 okay that's the x and y then what do we want to draw we want to draw a string global dot hours is the first one and then our second one is plus you know have that zero whoops that's that zero remember because seconds is less than 10 and minutes is less than 10 so we have a zero here okay so we'll have hours then we'll have a zero close that then we say plus string global dot minutes close that plus two dots like that zero close that up plus string global dot seconds don't forget to put string here when you're dealing in uh, things that aren't in string format because draw text draws strings convert to a string first otherwise if you just put there plus global dot second it's going to be like well what do you mean you know so first convert to string Global to seconds okay we got that we need to close it off that's fine okay so if it's if seconds are less than 10 it's going to be put a zero there so when you see it, it'll be it'll be the colon then it'll be zero nine or zero whatever and then the same with minutes. So if they're both less than 10, then it will do it on both of them. So here we got an else if. Okay, so what happens if global dot seconds is greater than or equal to 10? Okay, so we don't want the zero there. Okay, so what happens if global dot seconds is greater than or equal to 10? And global dot minutes dot minutes is also greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so it's the opposite of this one. So I'm just going to copy paste this right there. And we don't want those zeros. So these are just all the possibilities of it either being less than 10, greater than 10, etc, etc. Okay, so in this case, it'll display them without the zeros. So it'll just be in the, the format of... It'll be in the same format, obviously, but there won't be a zero in front of the 10, otherwise that'll look stupid. Okay, now lastly, else if global dot seconds is less than 10 and global dot minutes is greater than or equal to 10 so in this case only one of them is less than 10 and the other one's greater than 10 so we'd have the same kind of thing here but only one of them so seconds is less than 10 so seconds will have that zero but minutes will not have the zero okay then I think there's one more copy that else if here we've got seconds is greater than or equal to 10 and minutes is less than 10 so it's just the opposite of the one before so seconds is greater than or equal to 10 so we don't need what we don't need zero there but minutes we need a zero right there okay so let's check this out quickly so if seconds and minutes are less than 10 they both have a zero if seconds is greater than or equal to 10 and minutes is greater than or equal to 10, so they're both over 10, neither of them have a zero. And then here we've got the alternate no zero, zero, and zero, no zero, depending on those three. Okay, that's all good. All good right there. I think that about wraps it up. I think we should try this. Don't forget to put object control controller in the room, wherever. And we're going to save and test it out. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there we go. We've got zero, 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 zero. And if I push play right over here, it's going to start. Let's see what happens. Oh, that started. One, two, three, four, five. It's counting up. Very slowly as it does per second, depending on room speed. 
and that should be fairly accurate. Uh, you can you can open up your clock and then uh, check out if it's if it's you know accurate, but it should be it should be very accurate. And we're going to see what happens when it gets to sixty and see if it clocks over. It should clock over there. But to test it, you could always oh the our pause does work. I'll play pause play pause play. You could always just go to com controller and set these variables up. So we can say I was just not. Uh, minutes is is fifty nine, seconds is forty forty five, and then here we're gonna test that if it gets to sixty seconds, it's gonna increment uh, minutes by one. But because minutes here is fifty nine, that'll that'll reach sixty, and then that hours will get one. So this will reset to zero zero. That'll go one. So if that works, it'll mean that all of our other programming is correct. So there we go, fifty nine forty five. 15 seconds and then it should clock over. There we go. 52. 5 seconds. And moment of truth. Boom. See that? That went to 0. That went to 1. That went to 0. It's clocked over to 1 hour exactly. So that wraps it up. Obviously, so you'd, you'd put this like in the corner of your game and shows people how long they've survived. Um, you won't really have a play a pause button. So in your room create, you'll just set uh, what's that? Uh, global count count up equals true when when your game starts and when your game ends. You can just say it's count up equals false. Or oh, when the player dies, it's probably a better idea. Count up equals false. Put it there. And then in your high scores, you can display like their points and how long they lasted. That's a good uh, high score system right there. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Tell your friends also. Yeah, got a lot of new tutorials coming up. Um, I'm also going to be doing the opposite of the count up one, which is the countdown. Slightly different, um, even more complicated, but yeah, slightly different. But it's also useful if you've got a survival thing where, I don't know, someone's going to last so long. So I'll be doing that next time. So I'll put a link at the end of this one. You can check that out. So thanks for watching and uh, cheers.